Revelation chapter 21 verses 1 to 8. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain any more, For the former things have passed away. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the springs of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. This is taken from book of Revelation which was given to John the Apostle John a disciple who walked with Jesus Christ saw the miracles the signs that Jesus Christ performed in his earthly ministry saw Jesus Christ taken to the cross, to that piece of wood, saw the nails driven into his hand and his feet and the spear in his side, watched him die, breathe his last and scream out, it is finished, watched him taken off that piece of wood, placed in a tomb, tomb was sealed and then witnessed as Jesus Christ said that he would rise again destroy this temple and I will raise it up and the Old Testament speaks of Jesus Christ coming for his people in Isaiah chapter 53 we read that God is to become a man in Jesus Christ take on human flesh and take the pain and the suffering for his people for their sin take the wrath of God upon himself and take the punishment that was rightly theirs upon himself on that piece of wood and placed in a tomb and all this happened and this was spoken of hundreds of years before it did happen and so this is that John the apostle the disciple of Jesus Christ the disciple that leaned against the breast of Jesus Christ and the Last Supper, we've all heard of the Last Supper in the main, Passover meal. Jesus Christ was just about to be betrayed by Judas Iscariot, delivered over to the Romans, and to be presented before Pilate. And although Pilate found no guilt in him, he was condemned to death and crucified and handed over to the Jews to be crucified although it was the Romans that crucified him Pilate handed him over after declaring I find no guilt in him and this John was on the island of Patmos and he was given he was imprisoned on the island of Patmos and he was given 
this revelation it was a revelation from God which was given to Jesus Christ the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show to his servant the things that will soon take place he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ even to all that he saw blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear and who keep what is written in it for the time is near so chapter 21 is taken from that prophecy john on the lord's day on the island of patmos was in the spirit And in the spirit, he was given this revelation, this revealing, this prophecy. It's it, revelation means something. To, it's it's to be revealed, revealed to him. And he speaks in Revelation twenty one of a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first her first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Now, if we go back to the book of Genesis, we read about the creation of the present heavens and earth, although in its present state, it's not it's in, in its original condition, because we can all clearly see there are many not good things happening within this earth, within this system that we're living, creation has been cursed in the book of Genesis we read everything was good first day everything created it was good the second day God saw it it was it was good for third day fourth day fifth day sixth day everything was good death isn't good sickness isn't good illness isn't good tsunamis aren't good earthquakes aren't good volcanoes aren't good so what if God declared everything good has happened? Why do we need a new heaven and a new earth? Well, God, after creating the planet, the vegetation, the birds, the livestock, the other animals, created Adam in the image of God. And God created Adam in the image of God to walk with him, to be with him. A relationship, an everlasting relationship. In a life that would never end, spiritually and physically. God placed them in a garden on this planet. And God said to Adam and Eve, because Eve was taken from the rib of man originally, it was just Adam. God said, to Adam and Eve, fill the earth. Have dominion over the earth. Place them in the garden. He said to them, you can eat of any tree in the garden, but do not eat of this particular tree, the tree of the, of, of the knowledge of good and evil. And he commanded them, do not eat of this tree, but you can eat of everything else. Adam and Eve created perfect, not a fault within them, but they chose to disobey the commandments of God. And when they disobeyed the commandments of God, they realised they were naked. They took from the tree, they ate the fruit which God had commanded them not to. And then they hid from God in the garden, and God in the, in the, was walked with them. And then God said, where are you? Where are you? Because they were hiding from him. Because they recognised they were naked. They recognised something had gone wrong. Suddenly, they were aware of their nakedness. And God shouted out, have you taken from the fruit of the tree of knowledge and done that which I've asked you not to do? And reply back, well, we hid because we were naked. 
and then God asked them that question have you taken from the tree I told you not to be and the man tried to blame the woman she told me she said it was okay and God placed the curse then on all of creation on Adam and Eve and told them you will surely die because you've done this not not straight away physically but straight away spiritually there they were there was a separation came in from God and God made a covering, an animal covering, sacrificial animal to cover their nakedness. And so the whole of creation was cursed. And this is why we read in Revelation 21, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband so what is this new jerusalem what is this bride well this bride and this new jerusalem are those who have been redeemed of god all the believers his people in jesus christ the redeemed of god and his people are those who believe in the works of God because in the garden God placed the curse on humanity and God sacrificed that animal it was a type looking forward to when Jesus Christ would come whom the disciple John walked with and witnessed the animal could not be the ultimate sacrifice to deal with the sin of Adam and Eve and their sin spread to all men. Adam was the federal head of humanity. And because of Adam's sin, sin spread to all. We're all born in sin. We all sin. Everyone has sinned and fallen short of the standard of God. So this bride and the new Jerusalem are the people of God for whom Jesus Christ came 4,000 years years after the garden and the curse and the death penalty was placed on humanity and Jesus Christ took upon himself the wrath of God that death sentence for his people because God in eternity past declared the salvific plan would be that Jesus Christ God will take on human flesh and become like his brothers in humanity because the animal the original sacrifice to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve was not human not like those whom Jesus Christ came to say that was an animal sacrifice so Jesus Christ God took on human flesh to redeem humanity in his works not our works his works so that is who the bride and the new Jerusalem is they're prepared as a bride adorned for her husband and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of God is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God Jesus Christ told his disciples that he's got to go away to prepare a place for them but he'll come back and here we read that God has prepared a place he will dwell with them and they will be his people he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away and the big one here the, the last one to be defeated will be death we all know death is an imposter if death wasn't an imposter why are we sad when someone dies why do people fear death why do we look at death And know inherently this is alien. God has put eternity in the hearts of man. And so there will be no more tears. There will be no more curse. 
in this future relationship with God in Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Son and the Holy Spirit. There'll be no more tears, death shall be no more, no more crying for those who have died, death will be no more. Nor pain, no pain, for the former things have passed away. They were all brought in. They were the curse that God, the death sentence. God is a righteous, sovereign judge who judges all things righteously. We might not understand fully why he's done what he does. It's like a child with a parent. They don't understand fully why the parents have disciplined them. But in the end, that discipline bears fruit. And this is with God. All things work for the good of those that love God for his people. No matter what it is, all things work good. God's working a plan. And some people say, well, why did he do it like that? Why didn't he do it like that? Well, who are you, man, to speak back to God? He has a plan. His ways are beyond our ways. If he created the heavens and the earth and all things, that we see the universe, all the biological living life forms. He's far wiser than us. He knows more than us. He understands more than us. He's more capable than us. But he has a plan. There's a reason for it. I don't know the full reason. But he will succeed. He is the victor. And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. Jesus Christ on the cross said, it is finished. That was a salvific work. It is finished. He on that piece of wood took the punishment the, upon himself, the sin. For those who will believe in him, for his people. It was finished on that piece of wood. But death will be the last enemy to be defeated. And when that happens, as the Alpha and Omega, which is Lord God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, it is done. And he said to me, it is done. Death is defeated. Anyone, the beginning and the end, to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. To the thirsty, I will give. What did Jesus Christ say to the woman at the well in the Gospel of John? Chapter 4. This was uh, Jesus speaking to a woman in Samaria. Now, the Jews wouldn't speak to the Somalians for historical reasons, which we won't go into now. But a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, and by the way, this well, um, Joel Kramer, if you put into YouTube, Joel Kramer, he does all the biblical archaeological sites in Israel, Jerusalem, surrounding area. And he's got a video on his YouTube channel. And there you can see where this event took place, this actual well. And this conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan woman took place. And it is fascinating. You know, when we realise... These places spoken of in the Bible are real places. You know, it's a, you know, you don't really understand. It's like when you go on holiday and you, instead of just staying in the resort, you, you've got to get out amongst the surrounding areas to, to feel the place, to see the place, to taste the place, to experience where you are. And this is the same here. We can actually not just read the word of God, the truth, this revelation of God, but we can also see the places where these things happen. You can go physically to Israel and see this. Or you can 
read books, go online and see these places. People are putting this stuff on YouTube. There's a book by Joel Kramer called Where God Came Down. I'll say that, Where God Came Down, Joel Kramer. I think it's the number one bestseller, archaeological, biblical archaeological bestseller, bestselling book on Amazon at the moment. So you can read that. Take a look at that. I bought it. It's absolutely amazing. And it takes you to these places and you realise, wow, this is... These are these aren't just created like in in a book of fiction. These these are real places. This is a historical text recorded historical events. And this woman of Samaria, a woman from Samaria, came to draw water. Jesus said to her, "Give me a drink." For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, "How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria?" For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans, Jesus answered her. If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. And that's Jesus speaking. In Revelation, here again, we read. I will give from the spring of water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. He said, if you thirst to the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. This is God declaring and God, Jesus Christ, who created all things, telling the woman at the well. If you knew who it was, you know, you'd ask me for a drink. Who is saying to you, give me a drink? You would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. And then we read on. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. He's talking about the water from the well, the physical water from the well. But he says, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Amen. And there we have Jesus Christ declaring that he is the one who is to the thirsty. I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. Without payment. It's not our works. It's his works. He's paid the price. He's paid the price for that water. We don't, it's not about us. It's about him and his works. So the one who conquers will have this heritage and I'll be his God and he will be my son. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually moral, sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. I'll read that again. But as Sorry, the one who conquers will have this heritage. We can only conquer in Jesus Christ. His works on that piece of wood that John, the disciple, the apostle, witnessed. It's his works, not our works. He, he reaches in, takes out that heart of stone, replaces it with a heart of flesh. Gives us the gift of faith. Faith and belief are his works, not our works. We are dead, dead because of Adam and Eve and because of our inherited nature and our sin. We are all without excuse for we've all sinned. We've all, all of us, broken all the commandments of God. Just go and read the Ten Commandments and say honestly, have I, have I kept just one of these? Read them. Go and read them. Ten Commandments, Book of Exodus, Chapter 20. Go and read them. And when you say, I've kept, I've kept those, I've kept, you know, I've kept them. Then you've demonstrated one of the commandments and you've disobeyed it. You're a liar. Have you stolen? Have you looked at a woman or a man lustfully? Have you married? That's called adultery. Cursed God, have you taken his name in vain? Amount of time do you hear people saying, Oh Jesus Christ, oh God. 
so this, so that. Can you read them? Can you clearly see? You've broken the commandments of God. God's commandments are higher than our commandments. He's a righteous God. He judges justly. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral. Sexually immoral means those who commit fornication, sex outside of marriage, homosexuals, lesbians, lusting after your neighbour's wife or your neighbour's husband, adultery, etc. There's lots of different sexual sins. Idolaters. Created your own gods. We create our own gods because inherently we know there's a creator. We're always looking for this authoritative authority outside of ourselves. And we then turn it back on to I am going to be the one who says this seems right. Man does things that seem right to him, but in the end it leads to death. There's only one way. I am the way, the truth and the life, and that's Jesus Christ and his commandments. All liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. The second death and the first death. The first death is when we die. Okay, you could be argue, you could also say, well, the first death from the garden, that was when death was declared on all of humanity, all of humanity fell, all of sin fell, it's all the standard of God, death penalty. Everyone is going to have that physical death. Apart from there was one or two in the Old Testament, Enoch, okay, that's another subject. But everyone, 99.99% of those human beings who have ever lived, living or will live, will die a physical death. Unless they're still here when Jesus Christ returns. So, the first death is our physical death. We're spiritually dead because we're separated from God in Adam. The natural man doesn't understand the things of the spirit. But, physically, we're all going to die. And it says here, which is the second death. But also... God says there's going to be a day of judgment when everybody, when the, when the graves, when the sea, when the land will give up the dead that are in them. And then comes judgment. And everybody will be judged according to what they've done in the body. There'll be the judgment also as to whether you've accepted Jesus Christ or not, or whether you believe in Jesus Christ, whether you've rejected Jesus Christ by the word or by and by what we've done in the body, there are people who have committed worse acts than some others, but we've all not reached the standard of God because we've all sinned. We've, if we've broken one of God's commandments, we've seen whether we've lied or whether we've murdered. We're not at God's standard. And that standard is a holy standard. When people say, I've done this good, I've done that good, I've done this good. No, you may have done that good. You may have helped this person, you may have helped that, or done this for somebody. But your sins are still like filthy rags to God. He's a holy God, he can't look upon any sin. And so Jesus Christ took upon himself God's wrath, because that's what it is, God's wrath on sin. Upon himself for his people. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And I'll say again, saved from what? The wrath of God. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the standard of God. So the second death, the second death, is once we've been judged. And if your name's not found, written in the Lamb's book of life, if you are not a believer in Jesus Christ and his works, not your own works, then your 
place for eternity is in hell in the second the second death the lake of burning fire which was prefer, prefer, prepared for the fallen angels Satan but you will also be placed in there thrown in there burns with fire and sulfur that's what the word says that's what Jesus Christ says so believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today is the day of salvation today not tomorrow today amen